Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my other hand for you guys. I did record the other hand on a previous video, so if you guys missed that, make sure you guys check it out. I will leave that linked for you guys. But I am just starting off by prepping my natural nail with my mandrel bit and sanding band, both from Profiles Backstage. I'm using the medium grit sanding bands in the color purple. And I do have my e-file speed at 4,000 RPMs for my prep. I'm just very carefully going around my cuticle area and I am bracing my hand on this little container that I use for all of my sanding bands. I'm just using it to stabilize to help me a little bit since I am e-filing with my non-dominant hand. I want to make sure that I have full grip of it and everything is nice and secure so that I do not hurt myself. So I'm just going in very, very carefully, very light pressure, just buffing off that shine again around that cuticle area and all the way through the surface of my nail. Next, we're going in with my needle bit. This one is from Profiles Backstage, and I have my speed of my e-file still at 4,000 RPMs, and I'm just very carefully going around that cuticle area, trying to remove any excess dead skin that I may have missed with my mandrel bit, and I promise you, I still get a good amount, even though I went in with my mandrel bit. So this is one of the really good things to implement into your prep work if you haven't already. It's just gonna ensure that you fully clean off that nail plate and you are able to get the most adhesion from your products and very minimal lifting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. Again, very light pressure around that cuticle area at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. Now I am moving my speed up to 5,000 RPMs for my cuticle ball bit. This one is from Profiles Backstage. And I'm just going in around that cuticle, on the cuticle I should say. And this is going to help buff off that dead skin instead of having to nip or cut anything off. This takes place of that. And you're able to fully, fully take off all that dead skin. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that again at 5,000 RPMs. Very light pressure, of course. And if you're having any stubborn little areas, go ahead and up the speed just a little bit. Maybe up to 6 and that should do the trick. Now very quickly, I'm taking the Kiara Skylint Free Wipes and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. It's going to help really, really clean the surface and remove all the dust while also dehydrate the nail as well, which is a good step to implement into your prep process. Now I'm taking my form and I'm just prepping it per usual. We take it off of the sticker paper and then I take off that little sticker that comes in between the form, place it on the back end to make it a little bit more sturdy and then I just start pinching the tip. Place it on underneath my nail and once it's nice and tight, I start pinching in the sides and really making sure that it is attached to my finger and it's not going to budge anywhere. And then you can secure the top little flaps and it definitely will not go anywhere. So very quickly, I'm just going to add one layer of the Triple X Bond from Not Polish. This is their primer and I absolutely love it. And then we're going to go in with our acrylic application. For today's video, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Brush in a size 14. I've been loving it ever since I started using it. So I'll let you guys kind of in on it once I get a little bit more comfortable with it. But for now, I'm still trying to adjust to the amount of liquid that it picks up. But I just have to remember that it is a bigger brush and I do have to kind of fix that on my end. But I'm just going to go ahead and start applying my acrylic. This is First Nude from Not Polish. And I basically place it onto the form. Very, very gently push it up near my natural nail. And then I start tucking in the sides and forming out that shape that I want. So for my nails, I am going based off of more of a tapered square. I'm not trying to make them super, super skinny, but I'm also not wanting them super squared. So I'm basically just tucking it in very, very lightly. And then I'm focusing on the shape and the length. 
So I remember on my last video I did up to a size 4 so I'm basically doing that on this one as well. And even though the acrylic is still very thin at this point, I'm not focused on that. I'm focusing more on the shape and the length and then I can always build up the thickness afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead again, try to focus on that shape, really, really tucking in the tip, the sides, and making sure ultimately that it is nicely connected to my natural nail. Now once I have the shape and the length that I want, we're going to be focusing on building up the rest of the nail. And I'm starting off by placing another bead right where my natural nail meets the extension and we're going to be blending that out very quickly. I'm just focusing on the part that is going to be blended towards the tip because I want that to be nice and smooth. The back end of the bead that I placed, it doesn't really matter because that is actually going to help you build up your apex. So the thicker you leave it, the better and easier you will create your apex. So I'm just going in with another bead near the cuticle area and I start blending that out again. And you get a nice natural apex. And then if you need to build it up a little bit more, then you can add some more product. Now I will say for today's video, I struggled so much with my cuticle application. And it is because typically when you have tips on your nails, you can place your finger anywhere in whatever direction. Sometimes you guys will see me flip my hand around and I can blend out the product that way and avoid any spillage in the cuticle area. However, because I have forms, I can't bend my hand like I usually do. And I also can't stabilize it on any surface because the form underneath is very like it sticks out a lot so it kind of prevents me from doing my normal application which is fine i was able to fix it but you will see on a lot of the nails that i really really struggled with that cuticle application and i tried to clean it up as best as possible but i did have quite a bit of spillage so even though you try to really really tuck it back in no matter what you probably will still have a little bit of spillage so i would suggest Go in with your e-file and really, really try to get it out of that cuticle area. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish my application. Do the same thing on the rest of my nails. Uh, don't forget to add your primer because I tend to do that whenever I'm doing forms. So make sure you guys do not forget that.
Okay, so after this point, I got really, really frustrated. So whenever I'm filming my own nails, I have to have my hand in a specific position that I typically am not comfortable with when I'm doing my own nails. So if I'm not recording my nails, I can be really up close to my face. I can really get in there and not have to worry about staying in frame and in focus. But whenever I'm filming, I have to really leave my hand in one specific spot and stay focused on that camera to make sure that I am still in frame and still in focus. So that cuticle area was really beating me down. So I went ahead and I was like, you know what? They get the idea. They've seen this done many times before on my channel. If you haven't, you can always check out my other videos where I'm doing my nails with my non-dominant hand. And I went ahead and just did the rest of my application off camera and then gathered myself and came back. So we are doing our filing process with my e-file. Remember, I'm doing this with my non-dominant hand. So I do struggle a little bit and I hold it very awkwardly. I'm just going in on that cuticle area, trying to get it nice and flush to my natural nail. And then we're going to file the rest with my hand file. I love hand filing sculpted nails. I feel like it just looks so good. I don't know what my reasoning behind it is, but hand filing and sculpted nails are just the perfect combo. So I'm going to go ahead and finish filing with my hand file. This is a Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. And I'm just going very, very fast on the entire surface of the nail. And because I am filing with my non-dominant hand, I always try to assist myself with my dominant hand as best as possible. I feel like I'm getting tongue-tied with saying dominant, but I'm going in and supporting myself and helping myself out by moving my dominant hand versus trying to file with the hand that I'm not used to filing with, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to go again very quickly on the entire surface, then file the tip make sure that the shape is nice and perfect we're going to continue that on the rest of the nails and then we are going to be prepping for our nail art Once I'm done with my hand file, I'm going in with the Kiara Sky buffer and I'm just buffing away that surface, making sure that it's nice and smooth so that I can go in very easily with my nail art. Taking a lint-free wipe from Kiara Sky as well and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, I'm going to go ahead and clean the surface. This is just going to help remove all of that excess dust. You can absolutely wash your hands, I just prefer to use this method. Now for our nail art, we're going to be doing something super simple, but super, super cute. And I feel like if you change up the colors, you can use it all year round. Um, this has been around for a while. It is definitely one of those nail trends that have always been one of my favorites. But I'm just going to go ahead and start doing the tip outline. 
and I'm just starting off on one end we're gonna do the tip as well and then the other side and we're gonna be shaping out a smile line so it's basically just gonna be the outline of what would be a French nail so once I get that outline done we're gonna start doing our smile line to the shape that we want we can make it a V we can make it a almond shape a really long one a very round one you can probably even do a squared one but I'm just gonna be doing kind of like a rounded almond one and try to recreate that on the rest of my nails we're gonna be doing kind of an ombre effect with different neon colors I absolutely love nude with neon colors so we're gonna go with green on the thumb yellow on the index finger orange on the middle finger pink on the ring finger and then purple on the pinky so we're going to be doing that same process i am using the not polish liner it is one of the longer bristle one which i think is a lot easier to create this type of design because you can do and cover a lot more surface with the longer bristles and yeah these neon colors are from profiles backstage they are from their frosting collection i will leave them all linked down below you guys know they have a special place in my heart absolutely love all of their gel paints and gel liners so i'll leave those linked down below if you guys want to check them out along with my discount code so you guys can save a little bit of money now i did have to do a little bit of cleaning up and to do that i'm just taking my flat brush from profiles backstage a little bit of young nail swipe very very little bit on it and then i'm just cleaning it up and then going back in and fixing whatever needs to be fixed Now remember this is gel paint so you want to make sure that you are fully curing these before you go in with your top coat. I went ahead and placed it in my light for a minute and then we're going to be top coating it. Leave it in there longer. If your light isn't curing it all the way just go ahead and leave it a little bit longer. Sometimes I do two rounds just to be safe because they are thick. You want to make sure you add thin layers and really really cure it very well. Now we're going in with our top coat. You guys should be very, very proud of me. I've been using shiny a lot more often, but this is Gloss It From Not Polish, and I'm adding a thin layer of that on the entire surface of my nails, really focusing on that nail art so that it gets fully, fully coated and we don't get any chipping. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton, and I will see you guys next time. <music>